Welcome to the Call by God podcast with Rotten Sanat, Adney Godin, and myself, Nixon Sylvain. This show is about dialogues of biblical characters and testimonies of Christians who submitted to the will of God. Each week, we'll bring on one guest so that they can share their story of how they were called by God. I hope this show inspires you. Enjoy. Welcome, world, to another episode of the Call by God podcast. I'm with Rotson Sanat and Adney Godin, and I'm your host, Nixon Sylvain. I am excited and elated, I mean, to be in discussion or in the presence of my brother and my sister. How y'all doing on this beautiful, blessed day? I am awesome. I'm grateful and thankful to be here on this time side of life this morning. Grateful uh, to discuss this topic, especially. Uh, you know, to allude to what Adney say, same here. I am extremely excited once again, given the opportunity to see life, uh, which most of us take for granted. And most importantly, I'm excited to go into uh, the divine word, which enlighten us and strengthen us. Uh, to sustain the day, you know, because we do not know what tomorrow may bring. So happy to be here. Amen. Yeah, good to have you on on here as well. But um, you, you know what? I'm I'm excited about what we're about to cover. You know, we'll, we've never done this before on our show where we talk about two characters. Okay, so we're talking about Cain and Abel. And we've never done this because normally we'll have people come on and we'll have them share their testimony or we'll grab characters from the Bible, which we already already covered two already, and we'll just talk about them. But I think it's very interesting how we're covering two characters today, and I'm I'm excited to have that discussion um, with you guys, you know, on today. So I think it's going to be a blessing of what we're going to pull um, from the text. Um, so um, what, what what do you guys think? Because I I think that is is fascinating how you know um, these biblical characters these were are actually real characters. I think it's fascinating because I think that we all can relate to someone in the Bible. I want to hear y'all thoughts, you know, before I dive in into the text. Okay. So for me, there are two women in the Bible that I, I used to identify with, Gomer and the woman at the well. And a lot of people, <laughs> when I tell them that, they're like, Adney, they were, and I said, yeah, that's my past. But as I grew it helps me to minister to other women who don't understand, you know, who, who they can identify with in the scripture. And when you're studying it and you're reading it and you go in, it's like you literally transport yourself into that time and you're experiencing it. Like spiritually, God allows you to experience the word of God. And, and that's I, I don't even know how to explain it because it's it's amazing. It's really, truly an amazing feel, feeling. Absolutely. Uh, to not only read it, but to be able to identify for that present moment, that time, that season where those individuals were and it completely aligned with what you're going through today. It just shows that this book is just not an author who's just writing words, but this is actually life. And uh, to speak about the first experience of brothers, what brothers actually go through and we experience that for those who have you know, brothers or sisters, you see, it's, it's true. Uh, we may not do it in a physical sense of what we're going to explain and discuss, but there is a, uh, a spiritual connotation behind it. Some of the attitudes and the characteristics where you can see uh, it's all spiritual. It is all spiritual. Yeah, that's, that's well said. So we're going to just dive right into it. Um, first of all, I want to highlight, I know this, uh, this is not about the dad, the parents, um, Adam and Eve. But um, we see here in um, verse number one of chapter four of Genesis, Genesis 4, 1, um, where it says that uh, now the man Adam knew Eve as his wife and she conceived and uh, gave birth to Cain. And she said, I have obtained a man, baby boy, son, with the help of the Lord. And uh, what I like about this is that now we see here um, they're doing exactly what God has called them to do. Um, so we see uh, Eve, meaning life. Now she's the life giver. She's uh, giving life now. So that's that's very important to highlight. 
and uh, verse number two. So I'm going to read from um, verse number two through um, verse number seven of Genesis four. I just wanted to highlight Eve, you know, sneak in and, you know, the mother in for a little while. But let's do this. Before I go into verse number two, I want to talk about the meaning of Cain and Abel. Um, Cain means gotten and uh, acquired one. And um, Abel means breath. Okay, breath. So those are important to to know of. Um, And then now let's go into verse number two. Um, And it says, and later uh, she gave birth uh, to his brother, Abel. Now Abel kept the flocks of sheep and goats, but Cain, he cultivated the ground. And in the course of time, Cain brought to the Lord an offering of the fruit of the ground. But Abel brought an offering of the finest firstborn of his flock and the fat portions. And the Lord had respect, regard for Abel and for his offering. But for Cain and his offering, he had no respect. So Cain became extremely angry, indignant, and he looked annoyed and hostile. And the Lord said to Cain, why are you so angry? And why do you look annoyed? If you do well, believing me and doing what is acceptable and pleasing to me, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, But ignore my instructions. Sin crouches at your door. Its desire is for you to overpower you, but you must master it. Cain talked with Abel, his brother, about what God has said. And when they were alone working in the field, Cain attacked Abel, his brother, and kill them. So we're going to talk about verse number eight when we go into the next se- section. But Adney, I want to hear your take on uh, Genesis one through seven. Okay, so I was sitting here going because mm, the the word no um, or new. A lot of people don't understand that that's a concept of intimacy of Adam and his wife coming together, having intercourse. She's getting pregnant, and then she has a son. And then he knew her again and she got pregnant and had Abel. Now we get the two different hearts. That's what was going through my mind. Two different spiritual mindsets, two different characters. Cain, the older brother, Abel, the younger brother. One is humble and one is literally, I'm sorry, I'm going to say arrogant and and self-centered. That's what I see in in Cain. And in Abel, I see a humble, compassionate, gentle spirit. That's what, you know, was kind of revealed to me here. And then to know that Cain did what his father did. He cultivated the ground, right? He took on the trade that his father had, which means the family business was was continuing. And Abel, he, you know, he tend to the sheep, the flock, but he did it so well that, you know, there were like really nice, thick looking um, sheep. And he went to God and he said, you know what, Lord, this is for you because you blessed me to have this flock. Whereas Cain, as he tilled the ground, it was like, mm, I'm going to go ahead and put you on a back burner, do what I'm going to do. And I'll just bring to you whatever I have left. That was like, that's what, what went through my mind as, as you were reading about that. All right. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm going to go a little bit deeper um, with this. So first thing, what I want to mention is that this is the first time that we actually see offering um, in the text. And one thing that was fascinated to me was their occupation. So they're doing exactly what God has called them to do. You know, God, because again, God desires product, production. You know, we, we talked about this where you can't be lazy. You got to be actually doing your work. And we see here in Cain and Abel, they were actually doing their job. It, it has nothing to do with their occupation. But I wanted to highlight their occupation because I think it's important because I see something here. OK, I see type shadows. So what I wanted to highlight is that Abel was a keeper of sheep. 
and goat. So we, we see here that uh, Abel uh, being the shepherd. So we know what shepherds do. They protect, they nurture, okay? So uh, I see type shadows of Jesus in, um, in here, right? So Abel being the righteous seed, the, the heart of, of purity, right? And Cain, um, he tills, he's, he's a tiller of the ground. What, what um, you know, Adney alluded to, he, pre, he cultivated the ground, did pretty much what his daddy did, okay? He followed his daddy's occupation. So in, in essence, um, he was a, a farmer. And we know what farmers do. Uh, farmers, what they do, they reproduce, okay? They, they um, agriculture. So if you know anything about farming, I don't know much about farming, but I know what farmers do. They take a seed, they take that seed and they plant it and that seed reproduce. In essence, so everything, so God has, he has a protector. He has one that's a shepherd. He has one that protects and take care of sheep and goat. And here's another one that grows stuff. He reproduces stuff. So everything that they have and everything that they're doing in their occupation belongs to God. And this is where it becomes the heart issue. And I think what the author is trying to um, examine is that, that nothing here on earth belongs to us. That here you are, you're working. And it's, it, it's amazing to me that it was Cain who brought the offering first in verse number three. It was Cain who did that. So Cain had enough uh, respect or reverence for God, but he brought it, but he didn't bring his finest. So now what I'm seeing here in Cain is uh, a, a, a degree of selfishness. You know, OK, so he's saying, OK, I could just picture Cain if I could just visualize it um, years ago that Cain, he had all his crop and he's like, I'm going to give God the rotten stuff, the stuff that fell to the ground. Right. We could see that apples that rotten with worms on it. I'm going to probably give God that. And God deals with that. Oh, I wish. Oh, I wish we had time. I would have I would have break that down. But we see Cain here is not giving his finest, but here Abel on the other side, the protector of sheep, the one who nurtures the sheep, he's giving God his best. So I'm assuming that Abel had probably had the mindset is like, you know what, this stuff don't belong to me anyway. I'm used to caring uh, uh, for sheep, you know, so I'm going to give to my Lord the best. And the reason why I see type shadows of Jesus here. Is, is because of the purity, the offering. And we see here, um, we're going to see a pattern even through the Bible um, in Levitical practices where the same emblems, um, the, the keeper of sheep, they're going to be used as sacrificial animals unto the Lord. So God using this very same thing that transpired here in Levitical priesthood practices years from now. And even with Cain, God still used Cain practices because God is going to use the children of Israel to do grain offerings. So this is the first time that we actually see offering in the scriptures. So for for um, in the future, you know, yeah, you're going to see sin and guilt offering where they're going to be sacrificing animals. They offer it unto God. And the second part, you're going to be seeing the grain offering you know, which they offer produce um, unto God in terms of, of wheat, okay? But um, that's my take. We could stay on here because it's, it's getting good to me. Um, I want Rod to, to kind of like talk, uh, you know, see what you see or examine through the scriptures. Essentially what I see is uh, I think you guys have described and dissected and have broken it down in so many various ways which uh, the viewer should be able to identify now with the passage. But um, <clears throat> all I see really is a, um, a spiritual warfare that is taking place that started uh, initially with their parents. Once you have given the opportunity for the unclean spirit to come in, now you see it is trans- transcended down into the children once again. Um, so you see one who acknowledge the creator, who acknowledge the most high, who is in full relationship with God. And you see one who who actually is not necessarily fully connected, though he's religious. I think this is the first form of religion 
because he's just going through the motions and the practices without an actual relationship. So I think it started, you know, as we can see in this family, first family, Adam, Eve, and their two sons, where one is actually an organism in the body and one is an organization. Um, So, yeah, that's all I really see is a spiritual matter. The root of this whole thing is one actually in a relationship and one is actually going through the motion, which is tradition and a custom. So God clearly demonstrates relationship will always uh, please him and a custom and tradition he would do away with. So that's that's from my perspective. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thank you for making it midway through this episode. We want to take a moment to sincerely thank each and every one of you who have been supporting our show. Your encouragement and positive feedback mean the world to us. We want to continue to bring you inspiring and thought-provoking content each week, and that's where we need your help. We kindly ask you to support our podcast by clicking on the link provided in the description below. Your support will enable us to grow, reach a wider audience, and continue to produce the quality content you enjoy. We truly appreciate your support and value your contribution to the Call by God podcast. Together, let's inspire and uplift others in their faith journey. Thank you once again for your continued support, and we look forward to bringing you more enlightening episodes in the future. God bless. Okay, so um, when God said to Cain, why are you angry, extremely, forget angry, extremely angry and indignant? And he looked annoyed and hostile and God said to him, why do you look so sad? Why do you look so mad? If you uh, believe me, if you really listen to me, will I not accept you? And Brother Rod said something so powerful. It was because he was going through the motions, right? And that's, that's some of us. Like we, we come to worship service and then we, we you know, we, we go through, okay, I'm going to do the Lord's Supper. I'm going to give, I'm going to sing, I'm going to hear a sermon and I'm going to go home. And then I sit there and I'm like, what, God, why aren't you blessing me? God, I prayed about this, but you're not answering me. Is it possibly that you're just going through the motions and God is like, I'm bigger than that. I need you to go deeper with me. I need you to really have intimacy with me. Like Brother Daines broke it down one time about the husband and the wife into me see, right? And it's like, God wants us to have that same relationship with him. Like we need to be so aligned with him that when we ask him for, sometimes we don't even have to open our mouths to ask him. He already knows what we want because our spirits are so aligned with him. And that's what I just literally picked up was we're so disconnected from God and we're angry with him about certain things and we don't realize it is us. It's the self-examination that needs to take place. And that's what I wanted to share with that. If you enjoy podcasts like myself and you're seeking a podcast host, look no other than Buzzsprout. Buzzsprout gets your show listed on every major platform. You get a great looking podcast website audio players that you can drop into other websites, detailed analytics to see how people are listening, tools to promote your episode, and more. Podcast isn't hard when you have the right partners on your side. The team at Buzzsprout is passionate about helping you succeed. Join over 100,000 podcasters already using Buzzsprout to get their message out to the world. Following the link in the show notes lets Buzzsprout know that we sent you. Get you a $20 twenty dollar Amazon gift card if you sign up for a paid plan and help support our show. Thank you. Yeah, that's uh well said. Um to make it more uh relevant um uh, for us, you know, because sometimes people read the Bible, they be like, oh, I don't sacrifice no animals or I, how am I to offer an animal to God or or a plant or a seed. But that's well said in, in essence to make it more relevant. Um I want to add just a few things on, on what you uh, both of you guys said and actually to make it more relevant in terms of our, our offering. So, you know, that we know um, they didn't give, they offered, okay? So we know that offering is more presented, is more sacrificial 
Um, and, and again, like I alluded to, um, this is the first time that we actually see offering and give is more like an open hand, like kind of like here, <laughs> you know, that's what most folks do. Um, they don't offer to God. And when we speak in terms of offering, um, especially nowadays, we're not talking about money. We're not only talking about money because people say, oh yeah, I offer to God or, or I pay my tithes or I offer. No, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about your time treasure and your talent. That's a way that we offer to God because we know in this world we came with nothing and then we're going to leave this world with nothing. So we ask ourselves like, okay, what is our purpose and our call? So to make it more relevant, so our time, we offer our time to God. There's 24 hours that God has blessed us with. We offer it back to him. Like, what are you doing with your time? So I'm sure if Abel was here, he would like, look, I did, I, I, I utilized the time that I used, <laughs> you know, <laughs> caring for the sheep and, and obeying my parents. Cause you could tell Abel was a good kid. You could tell <laughs> the dude taking care of sheep. <laughs> so that means he had to be a good, and he had to be a little bit brave. I'm sure he looking out for the wolves that wouldn't attack the sheep. You know what I mean? So Abel, you could tell he had a, a, a decent, good heart. I'm sure he would say that to us, like, you know, this, nothing this world is given to us. He'd say, hey, you, your treasures, you know, you got to offer to God, your treasures, you know, and we look at it in, and we see here selfishness as well. And in, in this passage, we see uh, selfishness on Cain part, like as though he want to keep stuff. Cause we as humans, we tend to be selfish if, if we admit it or not. You know, we always looking at the next man. That's why a lot of people get caught up in debt. A lot of people get caught up in a lot of things because we want to be like the Joneses. You know, I don't know where that term came from, the Joneses, but but that's how it is. And then nobody or a, a, a good portion of people don't want to put their trust in God and they don't want to believe in God that these things belong to God anyway. So I'm just like a manager and I'm a keeper of these things. That's why I like what the Bible used for Abel. He was a keeper of sheep. He was a keeper. He was a manager. He was watching over it, right? He was a supervisor. So, yeah, so we want to offer our treasures unto God and, and also our talents. You know, every, we all are gifted in some way, form, or fashion. God has gifted us, and that gift that, that, that God has given us, we have to use it for his glory. So are we offering our talent to God, or are we offering our talent to the devil? It's either one or two. <laughs> That's it. It's either one or two. You want to add some on that, Rod? Yeah, like, yeah, like I said, you can you could just highlight. Uh, it's the kingdoms. You know, these two boys symbolize the kingdom to me. It's that's why I said it's spiritual. If you just go, if we trying to get our viewers to see it from the root, and um, it is the kingdom of of darkness and the kingdom of light. The kingdom of light is crucified. He died. You know, he died. And um, you see that Cain continue in his dysfunctionalism and he continue in the spirit of selfishness, hatred, betrayal, lying, stealing, killing. You just see the two kingdoms right there. That's what I said. But it started in the foundation of the mother and the father. We see the, the replication and the ramification of two sons who is a signal of the kingdom. Because here it is, even the kingdom of darkness, God still extend his grace. He says, son, why are you angry? He said, why are you upset? Don't you know if you do what my other son have done, that I'm faithful to forgive you, son? So you, that's why people say, you know, if, if, if God is love, why do you do this? Why do you do that? But you, we, it's not what you say or what you, how you think. Read the manual. It's in the book. It's a demonstration of our father is giving us multiple chances to accept him and to get it right. But Cain refused because, like I said, he never had a relationship. He had a tradition, a custom. And he ultimately paid the sacrifice and the price for it because we're going to go into the next portion where he is cursed through all throughout his life. Yeah, well, actually, um, that's the second, third portion. But I know you touched on it a little, little yeah, bit, but yeah. I'm going to go ahead and read the, the next three verses, 8, 9, and 10. 
And I know some of y'all alluded on this. You guys touched on it already, but I'm just going to touch it anyway for the far listeners. So uh, verse number eight in Genesis chapter four, it says, Cain talked with Abel, his brother, about what God had said. And when they were alone working in the field, uh, Cain attacked Abel, his brother, and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, where is Abel, your brother? And he lied and said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? The Lord said, what have you done? The voice of your brother's innocent blood is crying out to me from the ground for justice. Which one y'all want to tackle this or what y'all pick up out of what I just read? Oh, that was good. (laughs) (laughs) Cain slewed innocent blood. Number one, Cain killed Abel, his brother, made in the image of God. Man daily takes the life of creation. We are made in God's image. And because of that, we should never, whether it's the person's character, attack them because we're in God's image. Whether it's physical, where you murder somebody, that is unfree. Like, you cannot do that. That's that. You're made in my image. How dare you take a life? How dare you? Slay your brother. And not only did you slay him, you slayed him out of jealousy because he chose to give his heart to me and you chose not to. So jealousy, sin caused you to take his life. And then you gonna lie about taking your brother's life? Like you don't like you look me in the eye and lie dead to my face. And then God said, Well, your brother's blood is crying out to me. And he, it wants justice and justice he shall get. Because something we need to remember, God gives us the opportunity of repentance. So when he asked him that question, what did you do? I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? What you talking about, God? I'm not his keeper. So you, God gave you the opportunity to say, you know what, Lord? I killed my brother. I killed him out of jealousy. But instead of you owning up to it, you lied about it. Like Adney mentioned, Cain is now in the posture, in the position where he no longer have a relationship with the Most High. So he thinks that he can get away with things without being acknowledged or being detected. So he goes into the field and alone, which is isolation from his mother and his father, and then he slew his brother. And I think about, um, you know, once again, you know, the enemy uh, is going to always try to play up under you, watch you, jealous of you, envy you, and is always going to wait for an opportunity to strike. But most importantly, you don't have to defend yourself because God now is speaking up for him. God is defending him. He's bringing justice to him. So for our listeners today in society with social injustice, uh, we do not have to always go toe to toe and physically go and try to bring vengeance or try to go to the extreme to defend our compadres or our brethren because we do have a savior, a God, who is going to speak and defend on your behalf just like he did for Abel. So the punishment and the wrath of God is 10 times more severe than the punishment and the wrath of man because God is going to do it subconsciously, spiritually, where you have no choice but to submerge or submit to his will, which you will see Cain is going to flee from the presence of God, but he'll never flee uh, from God as a whole. Yeah, amen, amen. Rod love giving the juicy stuff away first. Oh, those are little teasers. <laughs> But this is what I could say about the text. Um, Cain was a wolf in sheep clothing. 
Okay, so I, I captured that they were alone working. They were both, uh, well, you could say that Abel was working. Um, he caught him while he was working. He caught him while he was doing God's will. And he slew him. So that's why I label him as that if he was working, if Cain, if I could picture in my mind that Cain was working, he was actually a wolf because we, um, the sheep, the shepherd protects the sheep from the wolf. That's why I said that Cain was a wolf in sheep clothing. And that happens even to this day. There's people that look righteous. They look holy. They carry their Bible around. They quote book, chapter, verse, but in their hearts are like wolves. They have the spirit of Cain because my Bible says um, in 1 John 3, 12, do not be like Cain who belonged to the evil one and murdered his brother. So Cain did not belong to God. Cain belonged to to his father, the devil. And he says, why did he murder him? Because of his own actions were evil and his brothers were righteous. Because see, the thing is about it, folk that are doing things that's outside of God's will are envious of those that are doing God's will. Oh, oh, why are you all so goody goody? Why are you always reading your Bible? Why are you always doing this? But somewhere deep down in their heart, they envy what God is doing in your life. So that's what I could see here. And this is the spirit of Cain. This even, even on to this day, like folks envy folks. Je- folks are jealous of folks. So here we actually see uh, the, the repercussions of sin and sin, the, the power of sin that entered into this world. Yes, we see so much that compact in this text. We see murdering and we see Cain. He's lying. So one sin after another sin. You got number one, terrible offering, murdering, lying. And kind of like what you guys alluded to, God was still merciful. Wouldn't have give this man a chance. Mind you, he belongs to the devil. But God like, God is still merciful. Wanted to give him a chance. But in his mind, he was like, Mm-mm. he he in essence, he already made it. He had his mind made up. <laughs> so when you got your mind made up, it's a done deal for you. You have now no longer belonged to God. You then belong to the devil, to the devil. So I'm going to go on to the next passage. I, I don't know if y'all want to touch on anything before I move forward or just move forward. OK, so verse number 11 through uh, 15 It says, uh, and now you are cursed from the ground, which has opened his mouth to receive your brother's shed blood from your hand. When you cultivate the ground, it shall no longer yield its strength. It will resist producing good crops for you. You shall be a fugitive and a vagabond roaming aimlessly on the earth In perpetual exile without a home, a degraded outcast. Cain said to the Lord, my punishment is greater I can bear. Behold, you have driven me out this day from the face of the land and from your face presence. I will be hidden and I will be a fugitive and an aimless vagabond on the earth. And whoever finds me will kill me. And the Lord said to him, therefore, whoever kills Cain, a sevenfold vengeance, that is punishment, seven times worse shall be taken on him by me. And the Lord set a protective mark or sign on Cain so that no one found me, him, would kill him. Any of y'all could tackle this. Adney looked like she ready. What you got to say on this, Adney? Okay. So, first and foremost, he says, you literally are no longer a part of my kingdom. You are a vagabond. And just the description of a vagabond just was like, 
oh my gosh. <laughs> like, I'm like, oh my goodness, just to know that you're nothing. Like, you're my creation, but in my sight, you are nothing. And the thing that Brother Rod said was, and you said it, God gave him the opportunity to repent. And that's, and I can't remember the scripture that says that, um, you know, your, your heart will be scored. Like you'll be so detached from God that you can't, I can't even remember the scripture right now. So please forgive me. But it's like, you're so separated from God that you are nothing in his sight. Matt, look, I'm going to say this. That's a, that's a position I never, ever want to be in. I always want to hear the voice of God. I always want to be in God's presence because even if I'm going through something like now, I'm in a, in a state of bereavement and I'm telling y'all, it's nothing but the grace and mercy and strength of God that I'm even on this call. And just to know, like, if I've allowed myself to be separated from God and I'm going through bereavement, I probably would have took my own life because it hurts. It hurts. So for you to get to a point where God says to you, what did you do? Just tell me what you did. Repent of it. And you said, no, he ain't my brother and I'm my brother's keeper. And God said, okay, fine. You and I are done. We're finished. Man, the one thing you never want is for God to depart from you. And that, that's what I wanted to share. It's extremely powerful, Adney. As we can see, um, God is still in communication with Cain throughout this whole thing. That is mind boggling to me. So you mean to tell me individuals who have made up in their mind, which we know it's, it's, uh, it's your heart. I mean, your heart is completely darkened. It's rotten and it's stony. That's why Jesus used the term hard, not your heart. I mean, it's a rock. There's no budging it, no compelling it to change. You mean to tell me people who are disconnected made up their choice, their will say, I want nothing to do with you. Even atheists, God is still trying to convince them. Still. Like folks, this is like that to me, that that's like prominent to me. This is really deeper than Cain and Abel. This is a creator. I want to highlight despite you killing an innocent man, not an argument, not a disagreement. This is an innocent young man, not only innocent, your biological brother who have done anything wrong and God is still in communication with you before he choose to even eliminate you, which is not even an option. He says to you, whatever you produce, whether you go to school, get a degree, have a family, anything that you do, you will not prosper. The ground would not, you know, bear fruit. So in today's society, for those of you who made up in your mind, I want nothing to do with the creator. Um, God is still in communication with you, still trying to convince you, still is faithful to you and committed to you despite the choice and the decision that you've made. So here it is. Cain is fleeing from the presence of God. And then he's, guess what he says? Now the spirit is fears upon him. He says, God, but you have bear something on me that I'm not able to carry. Number one. And number two, I'm afraid somebody's going to exterminate me. God said, no, I have grace on you, son. I'm going to spank you, but I'm not going to kill you. It's, it's folks. This is, this is mind boggling. This is mind boggling. This is, this is beyond us. God said, I am going to remove my hand from you, but of course I'm not going to allow anyone to exterminate you because God giveth life and he taketh life. So I, I, I mean, I allow Nick to go into more detail, but I just highlight the, the overall from the, from the King's perspective. God is not trying to exterminate anyone, anyone from the prostitute, the drug dealers, the killers, the jackers, the robbers, the thieves, the adulterers, the fornicators, all of us, no matter what we do, God said, I still want you to repent. Just repent and I'll change the situation. But Cain made up his mind and he still said, I'm not going to allow somebody to take you out. I don't know what to say but beyond this point. 
Wow. Yeah, that was, man, you guys are, you, you guys are going in. Sister Adney, Brother Rod, I don't even know if I should just feel in. <laughs> I guess I, I'll lay down the crumbs. <laughs> I'll lay down the crumbs, but um, this is what I can say. So this is pretty much the, the curse or the punishment of what's going on with Cain. And, and, and Rod said it best and how he described what God is doing here. But um, I like to highlight Cain simply well, because we're talking about Cain and Abel. But now since Abel is dead, so now we're just our focal point and our focus point is on Cain. So what I can say is that um, Isaiah uh, 55, 11, it says, So shall my word be that goes forth uh, from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please. And it says, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. So in other words, when God says something, God word do not return to him void. So when God put a curse or a punishment on Cain, it's done. Consider it done. <laughs> it's not, God can undo that. The only, and, and that's what God did in his sense. God says, okay, um, I'm going to give you security. So if anybody touch you, I'm going to deal with them. That's the, that's, that's, that's the only thing that, that's the only deal that God worked with Cain. That I already said what I said because of my words are so powerful that I can't take that back, you know, because what you did. Because remember, the wages of sin is death, you know, the wages of sin. And he already made up in his mind. So number one, we got to remember his actions, you know, kill this brother. Um, you know, God tried to extend mercy. He rebuked God. And I don't want to, have to, am I my brother's keeper? He lying and all bad offering. So God said, okay, you don't do things on your own. So we know what a, what a vagabond is, a fugitive. Those are people that wander. Yeah. You're going to wander. So, so I'm going to make it so bad for you that you're not going to have a home. And then the last time that I checked, a, a, a group of people that wandered was the children of Israel. They wandered for 40 years and 40, 40 years, pretty much 40 years. They wandered. So it goes to show you when you lack the trust of God, you're going to wander. You're going to go in circles when you have a disconnect. Because the children of Israel had a they, they had a leader that interceded on their behalf, but they complained. They'll tell their leader, why you didn't just leave us in Egypt while we was in slavery? We was eating collard greens and pork chops, but here we are, we eating manna, like manna and quail. Come on, really? But God was providing for them. God said, okay, since y'all want to complain, all this complaint, y'all, y'all going to wander. Y'all going to wander, but y'all children going to make it over there to the promised land. And I think that's what's going on with Cain. Cain, because of his disconnection with God, he still don't get it. He missed it. God said, okay. You're going to wander. And he said, God said, not only that, when you work, because remember, God has called us to, to produce and to be productive. God said, when you work, you're going to work even twice as hard. So, yeah, you're going to be working five jobs in order to become successful. That one job that you could have got that would propel you to be the person that you needed to be. Now you're going to work 10 times hard. And in fact, that was five jobs not going to even, you know, amount to where you want to be. So you still going to be unsatisfied just for that. That's how you want to be. So I believe that higher applies to us. We got to be very so careful to put our trust in God. We don't want to have the spirit of Cain, even though. Uh, God is sovereign. We don't want to take the advantage of God's sovereignty, you know. And I like the fact that God, like what Rod said, God is having a conversation with him. We talk about the creator. It came, he still missed it. So it's like today, right? The preachers, they preach the word. Because, you know, we communicate through God by his word. God is always, God always have a word to somebody, whether or not it's via social media, Rod might be posting some. Jesus is coming soon. You know, our minister may be preaching or just ministers, various ministries. So God is tugging on our heart. God is speaking to the heart. Now that seed, you know, some people may, may grab that seed and they may take it and run with it. But others may take that seed and just say, you know what, I don't want to have nothing to do with that seed. So it's kind of like, they say, you know what, God, I, I don't want to have nothing to do with what you're saying. 
That's a commute because that's God's communication with man is through his word. God uses his vessels in a sense. So we saying this back then, God communicated with Cain, but now God communicate with us through his word. And we still could find the same spirit on some folks like they don't have nothing to do with God. Because of that, they become vagabonds. They become cursed. Although God is still merciful, he is still sovereign. He will give them that opportunity because of Jesus Christ. He'll give them, give them that opportunity to draw closer to him. Any of y'all want to add something? In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Jesus was the word. So when our ministers are preaching, they're preaching the word. They are preaching Jesus. Jesus gives light. We, that seed is planted and the word is continuously watering the seed that has been planted because the word is Jesus. And all he wants from us is relationship. What I had to learn as a child of God, and even recently I had to ask God, why this season? Why this situation? And God had to reveal to me, you're still lacking in certain places. You haven't given up to me. And I had to go into his word and allow the word, Jesus Christ, to replenish me, to go into a place of intimacy with him. All of this that happened with Cain, all he had to do, all he had to do was go into the, I mean, God was talking to you. You had a personal dialogue with the master, with God, and you didn't even recognize it because your heart was so far gone that you didn't even realize that you were in the presence of the author and the, I mean, the alpha and the omega. Y'all, that's deep. That is deep. And then the word Jesus is right there speaking to you. And, and it, the, your, the seed of your heart is so hard that the water is not even watering it. Like that, that word is not even watering it. You don't even want to hear it. Man, look, I, I, that just blew my mind when you said that. All I could think of was in the beginning was the word. The word was there. The word was there. The word was talking to Cain and just trying to love on him. And he didn't even notice it. He didn't even feel it. He was so disconnected that he, that the word couldn't even penetrate his heart. That's, that's, that, that's a rough place to be y'all. That's an extremely rough place to be. And I don't wish that for nobody. Like, listen, listen to the master. When the minister is preaching, Harden not your heart. Harden not your heart. And that's what I wanted to share. Um, uh, you know, what highlights to me as well is remind you, the creator is so loving and so caring. He allowed, you know, this young man to live. But what is so also scary is because down the stretch, we, Cain has a family. So here's a cursed young man you know, have no place of rest, no stability, no, no creator. God, he has no presence of God. His character is violent, angry, but he's going to present himself like Nick stated earlier as a sheep in wolf clothing. So these young daughters that come in contact with this man, here is the first significant of today term we use running game, spitting game manipulation, deception, lie, disguise himself. Then this, this, then he goes into this woman and then he bear children, beating his children, cursing his children, you know, treating many type of way. This is where we see the neglect of fatherhood. This is where we see abandonment issues. So we see that this young man is alive, but he's cursed. So we see a domino effect here, folks. So that's why it's careful to the listeners. You have to connect with the Savior. You have to believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. If not, you will run into a woman or a man who has been cursed by God and who is running rapidly on earth. And then you come in contact with this person and they're going to disguise themselves. And by the time you attach yourself to this individual, you are now entanglement with a unclean spirit. 
but most importantly, not only God will still give you his grace and ask you to repent and then he can pull you away from the situation, but we find ourselves holding on to something which God wants nothing to do with, which we can identify now is called a toxic relationship. You're in a relationship, but it's toxic. Amen. Amen. We're about to close out. But so what we what we can say, what can you guys say in uh, maybe 20, 30 seconds or less? What was Cain and Abel's uh, uh, purpose or, or call? I'm going to start with Rod and then we're going to go to Adney. I believe uh, Cain's purpose uh, was to reconnect something that was broken. I believe God, his whole purpose was to reconnect with me because you're broken and he refused. I believe that Abel purpose was to be an example what it looks like to connect to me. His purpose was to lead by example and he did that tremendously well. Um, I'm going to start with Abel. Abel was to show us the definition of worship what it looks like to be extremely connected to God that you know when you offer to him, it, is, it, is, it comes from a pure and clean heart. Abel, I mean, Cain's purpose, um, it just shows evil, selfishness um, to show us we, we have these two sides to us and we have to understand that we can reject the evil side and take the worship side because what God desires is worship. And that's what I have. Amen. So I'm going to go a little a different direction. Um, maybe you guys already covered it. So there's nothing new. Um, Adam and Eve produced of the tree of what they ate. Okay, so so they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that what they produced. So Adam and Eve produced from that tree, that tree, they ate from the knowledge of good and evil. In other words, they want to trust God. So they have become like little G gods. So the 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 um, the sons they produce, one of which is a good connotation and one is an evil connotation. So the author is showing us the difference of what Adam and Eve produce and cause by sin. And I'm going to just leave it as that. <laughs> I'm going to just leave it as that, as that. I think God is good. We had an awesome, awesome um, discussion, dialogue. I mean, wow, I'm blown away. I'm, I am blown away. And I enjoy doing these discussions with you guys. It helps me as, a, as an individual, as a person to be a better man of God for God's kingdom. Um, so I'm going to just pass it over there to Rod. Anything you want to add, Rod? Uh, yeah, most importantly, you know, to our listeners, our viewers, uh, don't reject the creator. You know, that's, 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 you know, like you said today, it's this, this is done on me. I think the message was for me. You know, it just teaches us like, are we sincerely connected? And if we're not, reconnect like Nick said it makes us a better child of God it's just this was an amazing lesson amazing lesson we want to thank Adney actually for bringing it up she actually suggested it and we considered it so thank you since I had you itching over there you want to say something no um you you brothers covered it um I, I just want to say to our listeners you have to see wolves in sheep's clothing, but how can you see them if you're disconnected from the master? You need his eyes. You need his eyes. And if you don't have his eyes, you're going to always fall into di like literally diverse temptation. So it's time for you to really seek a relationship with the Lord. Stop walking this world like, you know, you live in above it all because you're not. And we can see that with Cain. He thought he had it all. And he ended up being a vagabond and, aim, and roaming this world aimlessly. We don't want that for you. So reconnect with the Lord. And if you don't have a relationship with him, seek, seek the Lord. And I promise you, he'll provide that person to teach you the gospel. And that's what I wanted to share. Amen, amen, amen. Well, as you heard it, you heard it from Rodson. You heard it from Adney. 
Again, thank you again for, you know, joining and listening in on a Call by God podcast. Again, we're always making a great effort to bring great content to you guys. I would say this by far was one of the best, the best dialogues that I we had about the Bible. But simply look, and I'm going to say this, and I hope, you know, it goes through right. <laughs> Please continue to listen to us. Okay, subscribe and share to your loved ones, your co-workers, your auntie, your uncle, uh, just peers, just share this content with them. And we just ask for a simple, simply a uh, simple donation. Um, just look on the show notes and just click on the link that says buy me a coffee. Just make a simple donation that, that would go towards our ministry so we could continue to bring great content onto you guys. So until then, um, be blessed and remember Jesus Christ is King. God bless you. Wait, there's more. What if today was your last day on earth? Would you be ready to meet your maker? Well, Jesus Christ has given us the good news. He told his disciples in Mark 16, 15, 16, and he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. Jesus Christ has instructed his children to share and preach the gospel, which is the good news, which means that Jesus Christ came and that he was sacrificed. He was buried and he rose on the third day by believing and by repenting and confessing and being baptized. You will be saved. So it is your choice. Jesus Christ will not force you. You've heard the message. You heard personal testimonies. But this is your opportunity to give your life to Christ. Don't wait until tomorrow, because tomorrow is not promised. So I hope you submit to the will of God and give your soul to Christ. Be blessed.